In Star Trek, it's the stuff that powered the warp drive of the Starship Enterprise into the 23rd century. Take us out. But antimatter isn't fiction, it's real, and it's one of the greatest puzzles in our universe. That's because there should be as much of it as normal matter. But physicists can't find reserves of it anywhere on Earth, nor anywhere else in the cosmos. It can only be found in extremely tiny samples made at incredible expense here, in Earth's largest particle accelerator, the CERN Laboratory of Switzerland. So basically what we want to do with it is to just make sure that every property that we know that matter has, that antimatter has it in the same way, or maybe not. Because any small difference there could help us understand what happened with antimatter. In 1928, British mathematician Paul Dirac discovered antimatter in an equation. But whole atoms of antimatter don't exist for very long, and that's because when they meet normal matter, the two explode with the strongest energy release known by scientists. If both had been created in equal measure during the Big Bang, the universe would have ended as soon as it began. So there's a, a big mystery because half the universe is gone. So it's a, an interesting question in itself. For two decades, scientists at CERN have been making whole antimatter atoms. They want to find out how they work, but mostly they wanted to drop them to see if they fell upwards, opposite gravity's pull. Because if they did, it would have thrown physics into crisis. It would be an enormous rev revolution. It means we don't understand physics. We don't understand nature at all. <laughs> After two decades, CERN's physicists produced about 100 millionths of a gram of antihydrogen and tipped a few dozen into a tube. The result? They fell down, just like normal matter. In physics, you don't really know something until you observe it. So this was the first attempt to actually observe that. What happens if I drop antimatter in the gravitational field of the Earth? And the answer is, as far as we can tell, they drop in the same way to the current level of precision of this experiment. Galileo, Newton, and Einstein vindicated. And no antimatter spaceships for us anytime soon. Colin Baker, Al Jazeera. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Al Jazeera.